Hello everyone, I am Dr. Rohan Thanderwal. I am a surgery faculty and I am joined today by Dr. Vinayal who is also a surgeon and he's done his MRCS as well. So the topic of discussion today is regarding the MRCS exam, its utility and its scope in India and abroad. So we are coming up with an app called Mortimer Green where we have a question bank for MRCS and we are starting with live lectures as well for MRCS. So MRCS is member of Royal College of Surgeons and this is basically the entry level exam which gives you the GMC membership, the General Medical Council membership which can enable you to then practice in UK. So Dr. Vinayak, uh, when did you appear for the MRCS exam and what was the reason why did you appear for the MRCS exam? So to be honest, uh, <clears throat> I initially appeared for my MRCS exam because I thought it was a cool thing to add behind your name. So I I appeared for my exam, the first part, uh, part A, when I was a second year resident. Uh, this was very back in 2017 and uh, I did my uh, part B in 2018, uh, in my early part of my th third year of my residency. I was a general surgery resident at Madras Medical College. It was a pretty hectic residency, but I never really thought that that was you know, a barrier to doing MRCS. So initially it was just a cool factor, but later on, as soon as I finished MRCS, I realized that a lot of hospitals, not in the UK, I'm just talking about India, in cities in Delhi, in Chennai, they kind of value the degree uh, quite a bit. So I started motivating people, you know, uh, my friends uh, to uh, do the exam again. Yeah, so it happened pretty much in the same manner for me as well, that at Sardarjang, I think so all of our seniors, there was a trend of appearing for the MRCS exam. And uh, we also appeared for part one. I appeared for part one towards the end of my first year. And uh, the final part we gave as soon as we finished our final MS exams. Uh, of course, in our time, there was uh, part one, part two and part three. Now it is part A and B only. So the part A exam is the MCQ exam, which is an intercollegiate exam. Now, a lot of queries have come to us regarding this intercollegiate exam. So, there are a lot of royal colleges of, I mean, there are multiple colleges which are there. So, you have the, the College of Edinburgh, Glasgow, uh, England and uh, Ireland. Ireland. So, there are four uh, royal colleges. So, the first exam is standard for all of them. So, if you appear for the first exam, the intercollegiate exam, then you can choose part B. You can appear for any one college. Now this part A exam is uh, a combination of basic sciences and a combination of core surgical principles. So it's divided into two, two parts. Dr. Vinayak, why don't you elaborate on it and tell uh, the listeners more about the exam. So the exam is a five year long, it's a single day exam, five years long, it's split into two parts. The first part is uh, basic sciences, which is uh, anatomy, uh, surgical physiology, surgical pathology, surgical microbiology. Uh, and the second part is principles of surgery in general, where they cover GI surgery, uh, thor thoracic surgery, basics of pediatric surgery, breast surgery. Um, trauma surgery is given a lot of importance, a little bit of critical care. Uh, so this is called as principles of surgery in general, and this is for 120 marks. So the, the first part is for 180 marks, the after one half is for uh, 120 marks and overall it's 300 marks. So passing the exam is not about you know clearing a certain score. It, it depends on how well your peers in the group exam do it. So usually on an average uh, you need to score more than 210. That is a more than 70% uh, in your exams to secure a comfortable pass. Some years it's 69, some years it is 72 but overall it's around 70. But Three months of preparation, I think uh, you can you can you know uh, kind of uh, get a score comfortably around 80s, not too difficult at all. So there is no negative marking. That is one and big advantage. Sir. Yes, that's a big advantage. And uh, three months of preparation, as Dr. Vinayak said, is good enough to crack the exam. So when we talk about preparation, the basic sciences part there's a book called Raftery, which uh, everyone refers to, and in addition to that, you can solidify your concepts by listening to videos from various sources. Even Mortimer Green is going to come out with uh, video lectures soon and live video discussions. Uh, part B 
or and I'm sorry, not part B, the second part, which is the applied surgical part. Bailey is, uh, you know, the Bible of surgery when it uh, comes to any UK based exam. And in addition to that, you also have to strengthen your concepts of orthopedics, something which is a bit weak for general surgeons. And if an orthopedician is appearing for the exam, then they have to read general surgery. Surprisingly, we find, tend to find that orthopedic surgeons, they kind of put in a little more effort and tend to pass the exams a little more easily. It's, it's surprising, but the last two, three years of experience, you know, training people in MRCs has taught us that if you're sincere, your specialty is not a major impediment. The other interesting fact which I want to convey is that you really need not be a surgery postgraduate to do your MRCs exam. Correct. You can be a post MBBS with an interest in surgery or if you want to, you know, kind of move to the UK. There are two routes. One is the plan route, of which you're not going to talk right now. The other route is the specialist register or the MRCS route where you can kind of do your MRCS part A and part B while working in a surgical environment, surgical department somewhere even as a JR and kind of make the shift to UK. It's not an ideal route because you don't get into post surgical training, but it is another way of getting into the UK. Yeah. What do you think about that, sir? You know? No, there are a lot of students who approach me who say that, you know, we've done six months of junior residence or JR ship uh, in a surgical department and we want to do MRCS. So I always encourage them that, you know, you should uh, take this route and uh, the, the advantage is that if you clear your MRCS, you get a straight away, you get a GMC registration and then you can enter your training. Exactly. So we were talking about the scope, like Dr. Vinayak said, of course, the cool factor is there that you get an added degree. And I truly felt that uh, this was a very wholesome exam and, and you really felt great after passing the exam. Uh, the second thing is in terms of scope in India, as Dr. Vinayak said, a lot of corporate hospitals give this a lot of value. And uh, you know, if you're applying for a job, you might be preferred over another candidate who doesn't have MRCS. In the Middle East, uh, if you're planning to go to uh, UAE, in Middle East, if you have an MRCS degree, uh, your salary package becomes two to two and a half times that of a person who doesn't have MRCS. So another major advantage there. And of course, this is the entry level for UK, where if you have your MRCS exam, then you can uh, land, up a surgical, land up with a surgical job in UK as well. So just a caution, your the uh, MRCS degree does not make you a consultant in the UK. It's an entry to the training okay. process, a longer training process, at the end of which you obtain an FRCS. But like Sir told, it makes a huge difference when you're applying for jobs in the Middle East or in any other uh, part of the other, other parts of the world, because it's a very internationally recognized degree which uh, gives you a solid credentials. Because in our Indian curriculum, we never teach uh, students how to break bad news, how to tell a patient uh, that something is wrong with their father or mother. So, oh no, very holistic level, as Sir told, uh, the experience was very satisfying. As soon as I finished my exam, I felt that I was a better surgeon, definitely, because it's not just the surgical part of operating part of it. It's the fact that you know how to convey your bad news. You know how to order a patient's in an OT list. Right. It taught us very simple things like, you know, if there's a diabetic patient, you put him on the list or not. You know, in our surgical training in a government medical college, these are not things that were ever emphasized. Right. So, I felt that the entire process of going through the examination, irrespective of you following a career in the UK or not, makes yes, you a better yes, surgeon. Absolutely. Absolutely. And also one more thing, if you plan to do fellowships in UK, especially a lot of orthopedicians or vascular surgeons like to go to UK for some time to do fellowships. So there also you need to get a GMC registration and for that you need to have your MRCS degree. So that was regarding part A. Part B is the practical exam or the OSCE exam. And Dr. Vinayak, why don't you briefly tell them about part B exam as well? So the part B exam is similar to your OSCEs. It's not similar, it's actually the OSCE stations. So we have a series of stations where they have an anatomy specimen or an uh, atlas chart where you're asked to identify the organs. They ask you questions on that. There are pathology stations. There are skill stations where you're asked to, you know, uh, do an incision and drainage of an abscess. All simulated models, not real patients. There are stations where you are asked to obtain a consent for endoscopy, uh, break bad news to a patient, or, you know, uh, funny situations like this, the CT scanner machine is broken down and the attenders are angry at you because they want a CT scan scheduled immediately. It, it, it's a kind of a, a mix it bag where they uh, test your overall skills as a surgeon, uh, not just in operating but also in areas of critical care. Uh, there will be stations on examination as well. B1 is examination includes uh, um, stations in ENT and orthopedics as well. 
So you will have to brush up your post MBBS skills uh, or your internship skills as well again. Yeah, so as he said, it's a very holistic exam where you know you have a communication skills section and you have so where you have communication skills sections and you have actual core clinical stations as well. And again, we feel that uh, around a month to month, month and a half of preparation for the Part D exam is sufficient. And uh, Dr. Vinayak does organize some uh, sessions in Chennai for uh, Part D training. Oh, we are doing it actually online this time. Uh, I mean, last four times, uh, uh, out of four, I think about two years, we have conducted four sessions, and only one of them was uh, offline. The other three sessions were online, and we have an excellent COVID. result. Yeah, obviously due to COVID, we had scheduled a session in January uh, in Chennai, but you know, because of COVID, we had to make it online. And I'm very happy to say that most students, we uh, the July session we had one, and uh, we had four students training. It was a very small batch. Four students who trained, all of them went to the UK and they had a hundred percent pass. So I think that was great. You know, when your students do well at the end of the day, and you know they're able to establish careers in the UK. And in this workshop, we kind of go holistically and you know teach you stuff which uh, other people also you know are hesitant to teach, like stations such as ECG for surgeons uh, and how to build a career in the UK. And our course for Part B is focus extremely on communication and industry taking because that is an area where Asian yes. and Indian students are lacking lacking and kind of tend to fail because our training does not emphasize that. So, so for the Part A exam, you can apply online by visiting the Royal College website. And like we said that at Mortino Green, we are coming up with a Q bank, we are coming up with live discussions and also video lectures which would help you for both Part A and Part B. So, if you like the video, please do press the like button and drop us a comment. And if you have any further queries, uh, please write it in the comment section and we'll be happy to help you out. Do try out the free question banks at, uh, the more, on the More Time Green app. You can download it free from the PlayStation or the Apple iStore. Thank you. Thank you so much.